Hey, welcome back to Mount Pleasant Farm in the Mount Pleasant Farm kitchen. I'm gonna spin around here real quick. You can see we've got a very small farmhouse kitchen. Nothing exciting here. We got a very small L-shaped countertop, but that's not gonna stop us from making some venison snack sticks. And today we're gonna to be using the venison snack stick seasoning by LEM, which is my favorite. And uh, I'm just take you through the process really quick so you can see how we do it. And uh, you won't be able to taste it at the end, but we'll tell you how good it is and more to come. Okay, so like I said, today we are using the LEM. This is pepper. Uh, it's the Backwoods, their snack stick seasoning. And these snack sticks are similar to a Slim Jim. If you use the original recipe, that's going to be like what you would consider, what you're used to as a Slim Jim. Okay, and of course you got the, the important, the yingling beer you're going to be drinking while you're doing this. Uh, we're using the Backwoods seasoning from LEM, the, the, the pepper. We got this particular batch from Ridgel's Whitetail Butcher Shop here in Southern Maryland. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, we got five pounds, each one of these packets, you'll see here it says, it says five pounds. Okay, so this goes with five pounds of meat, and this is, this is so easy, anybody can do it, that's why I'm able to do it. So we got our venison here, we got just about five pounds. I prefer to have a tad less, so you weigh out your stuff here, and you get about five pounds. If you're going to err on the, the side of caution, get a little bit less than five pounds, I think it makes the flavor a little bit better when you're cooking it. Those, those uh, flavors stand out a little better if it's mixed a little bit heavier. Get your venison in the bowl here. Trying to get blood all over your kitchen. And trying to get plastic in the meat. Okay. When you got the venison in the bowl, you can open up your, your seasoning bag. It's easy tear for some people, except when your hands are wet with venison. All right, so in the bag, you've got the spices, which you have to get out of here is the cure packet. The cure is your preservative, okay? This comes, you're gonna dump this whole thing in with. But basically, you've got the five pounds of meat, you take the, the seasoning that's in the bag and you just basically dump it right in there. Dump it right in. And then what it's going to tell you on the back is for each pound of meat, we're using the whole thing, so it's five pounds. It's going to tell you to use five ounces of water. So we get five ounces of water. That's one ounce. One ounce per pound of meat. It's a little bit, a little bit light there. Okay. Got our five ounces in there. All that's left to do is stir it up. Get in there with your hands, stir it up. You can do this in a, in a KitchenAid type mixer. You can turn that baby on and just let it run. But the key is you want this stuff mixed very well into the meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this stuff up and we'll be back in just a second. And you see we're mixing this up with your hands. You just keep squeezing and working the seasoning into this meat. Seems pretty wet right now, but it's going to dry up with this seasoning and going through it. Okay, so you probably noticed we got a different bowl here, a different container. That original stainless steel one was not big enough where I could really get into it. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm really squishing and, and kneading this stuff up with, with my hand. Don't be afraid to get dirty. Just make sure your hands are clean before you start doing this. Make sure it's very well mixed together. Okay, so something to note that I almost did. Don't forget to put your cure inside the meat when you're mixing it up. This is the preservative, and you put the whole thing in there because we're doing a whole five pounds. Just cut the top off, and it's pink. This is uh, sodium nitrate, I think it's called. Nitrate something, whatever it is. It preserves the meat. So there you go. Make sure you get that in there and mix it in very well. Okay, so we've got our jerky, snack stick stuff all, all mixed together, thoroughly mixed. You want to make sure that that preservative and you know, the cure gets all through it along with the spices. And we're going to be making these snack sticks. We're going to be pushing this out through the, the LEM jerky cannon. So this is the back part. This is basically a big caulking gun, except it pushes pushes ground meat out instead of any kind of caulk. So it works very well. I've been using this thing for years. I bought this years ago at Bass Pro Shops, made by LEM. LEM makes a great product. So the way you're going to do this, there's really no better way that I've found to do this. You keep your, your mixing container with your meat in the sink, 
in the kitchen sink. Get your dish rag out of the way, otherwise you'll be getting meat off of that. And just basically you're taking handfuls and you're forcing it into the jerky tube. So I just, I just take a scoop and you just work it in. This seems kind of archaic, but if you just push that in, you'll hear the air coming out of this end. And you just take, take the excess and just keep pushing it in there. And this tube will hold approximately two pounds of meat. Approximately. A lot of times you can't, you see I'm just taking the excess, it doesn't go in, I'm pushing it in with a palm of my hand. You see that I got less and less in my hand. And you get some more, and you keep pushing, and you keep pushing, and you're gonna notice, when you know it's full, when it gets really difficult to get this meat packed in this jerky cannon anymore. And you'll notice instead of being heavy on this end, it actually balances in your hand because you've got meat all the way to the end. So those are the kind of things you'll notice while you're doing this. So you just want to keep on packing that until you feel that is full. Okay, so we've got this section of the jerky cannon packed full. It's about as much as I can get in there. You can take this back section on here. And this is can be tricky at times, but it's really not that bad. You just get this on here, it's threaded. You want to make sure this arm is pulled all the way back, just like, just like a caulking gun. And press this on here and push and thread that thing. It'll try to cross thread on you because of the pressure. You just got to keep pushing down and it'll eventually screw on nice, just like that. See how some came out? That pressure's coming up. So there you go. It's already coming out. Okay, so we've moved our operation now into the dining room because we've got this giant 10 foot table. So you want some space here. You see I've got the dehydrator trays laid out and I've got the jerky cannon ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot, shoot basically a string of sausage or venison straight across here in rows. You want a little bit of separation between the rows, but they don't have to be a mile apart. So basically you're just gonna squeeze this. And it's just like putting a bead of caulk, except this stuff actually tastes good. And as you're gonna meter it out as you're going across, I'm squeezing the handle and moving this along about as fast as the jerky is coming out and to stop at the end that is going to break it off at the end and start another one you see you got about about a half inch in between them i found has always been good and a full dehydrator will, will easily take five pounds of these generally um, this dehydrator which is a an old redhead or bass pro brand which has done great um, takes about eight pounds total you can put about eight pounds of venison snack sticks and or jerky in this six tray dehydrator. So you're just gonna keep doing this until you empty your jerky cannon, and then you're gonna go back and fill it up again and come back for more. In the center section of your dehydrator, you can just navigate around it however you want to with the jerky cannon. But it's really easy, you've done this a couple times. When you start getting in the middle, I just bring it across and I just stop and continue on as I get on the other side. And you keep on going until you empty that first cannon. Okay, as you see here, we got five trays of these uh, venison snack sticks out of five pounds of meat. Um, just got lucky, I usually get uh, a little bit less than that, so I guess I spread them out enough. So there they are all, there they are, all are stacked up, and I'm gonna take them over on and put these on the dehydrator base, and I'll show you how I set up the temperature. Okay, so final resting spot here for a while. Um, not a lot of room here, so I'm going to put them on top of the uh, <laughs> on top of the washer, which is right off the kitchen. Things are clean in here, those as well as possible. So anyway, I like to set this is this redhead dehydrator goes top temperature is 158 degrees, and that's what I do it at for approximately eight to ten hours. So I'll start these now. It is uh, quarter till eight at night, and you know, obviously going to bed like 10 o'clock or something like that. This will go all night, and I'll get up in the morning around 4:15, 4:30 to work out, and I'll check these and see how dry they are. If they're, if they're good to go, I'll shut it off and I'll let them sit here for a while just to kind of get the moisture out and let them cool off before I bag them up so it doesn't cause any condensation. If they're not dry enough, you know, you'll know when you pick them up. You just, just pick one up. They should be kind of a leathery feeling. They shouldn't feel moist. They'll be a little bit greasy because they're warm and they've got fat in them, but they shouldn't feel raw. They, they'll be wrinkled. They'll look like a shriveled up little sausage and that's kind of what you're looking for. And this is something that you'll have to learn on your own over time, but you'll know as soon as you try them, these aren't done enough. And you can always put them back in and dry them out more. If you dry them out too much, you've dried them out too much. And you can get them dry enough to they'll actually snap 
that's too dry, okay? So you just want to kind of find that happy medium where they're dry, they're preserved, they don't have a lot of moisture in them, so they will keep. Bottom line is though, once they're finished, you're going to want to go ahead and let those things cool off before you bag them to reduce condensation in the bag. So the next time you see me will be tomorrow morning when we're finished up with these things, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Here we are the next morning. Uh, we put about 10 hours on this uh, on these venison snack sticks. And the way you can tell if they're done is when you take one of these things and you bend it. Um, it should not snap in half, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't bend around like a spaghetti noodle um, and not break. It should, it should kind of crumble as you're bending it in the middle so you know it's dry enough. If you don't feel it's dry enough, just put it in for longer. Otherwise, I'll take this. Uh, I'll take a pair of scissors here, and uh, you see the bag. That's that's the bag I'm doing right there for one of the for the boy in college. So these things are pretty long. So I just take a pair of regular scissors, and I just snip all the way through all these, cut them in half, drop them in the gallon Ziploc bag, and then I usually leave the bag open for a little bit longer. You want to make sure these things are all the way cool because you don't want condensation forming. In the Ziploc bag, you'll notice if, you, if, it, if they're too damp, you'll put them in the Ziploc bag and close it up and you'll start getting a little condensation in there. No big deal. Just just pop the bag back open and let it sit on the counter for another couple hours, you know, and because uh, chances are they're probably a little bit warm. But anyway, that's the process. I uh, hope you enjoy it if you, if you do it. Um, otherwise, like, share and subscribe and uh, always come back for more and uh, keep keeping after it.